Okay, listen up, it's day three of DNAD, and I've just been listening to this rather squeaky clean young gentleman uh, from RGA uh, talk about all the wonderful things that they're doing there. And, you know, he made this comment about how nobody has an ego. And one thing they don't do, give an award for at DNAD is the, the gold award for virtue signaling. But really and truly, I, I think for our whole industry, it's not just DNAD, they really should, because it seems like that's the thing that people are going for most these days. It's like to just try and prove how good a person they are. And I think that connects into ego. I've got this theory. When I got into the business, which was late 80s, uh, you know, how you, how you expressed your success was, was really just through rampant materialism. Uh, it was, you know, that's where the, the term conspicuous consumerism came from. And it was like the clothes you wore, the, co the, the, the car you drove, the, the woman that you dated, um, the uh, uh, jewellery designer, designer everything. Um, and then there was a shift in uh, the 90s and it seemed to become much more about your experience. Um, and then with the, in the, you know, in the, in the noughties, then with the rise of social media, that really got amplified as sort of like, you know, people weren't sort of posting what they had, they were posting what they were doing and they were posting where they were going. So it went from what you were having to what you were doing uh, to now it appears that sort of like, you know, you get all your social credit points for sort of like what you're thinking. Um, and it appears everyone is trying to give the impression that they're no longer thinking about themselves, but they're thinking about the good of humanity. And maybe they are, but I'm not buying it. Um, I just don't think that that's actually, uh, you know, an accurate representation from an industry which, let's face it, the definition of advertising is selling stuff, uh, selling stuff to people that they don't need, can't afford, uh, they're buying to impress people they don't like. But I wanted to address the idea of ego. Uh, you know, I think it gets a really bad rap and I don't actually think ego is a bad thing. I think, especially in this business, I think your ego is your self-concept and you have to have a strong self-concept. If you're gonna go out in the world and do big things or convince other people that your idea is the right way to go if you want to be a leader that you know you, you have to have belief in yourself and believe in your vision an ego a healthy ego is very important to that I think what most people talk about when they're talking about ego is really an unhealthy ego but uh, you know the question for me is who let's face it I mean I've traded on my ego for you know quite successfully for a lot of my career and then spectacularly badly towards the end uh, and subsequently I've taken a completely different view on that uh, since, I, since, you know, for the last eight years since I've been clean. So f the question is, how do you know whether your ego is healthy or unhealthy? Um, I think for me there are, there, are, there are four or five indicators which really help me with that. Uh, anytime I feel impatient, anytime I feel grandiose, anytime I feel omnipotent, uh, like I'm all important, you know, do you know who the fuck I am? Anytime I feel omniscient, right, like, you know, that I go around thinking I'm the smartest guy in the room. Anytime I feel defiant, and anytime I feel entitled. For me, those, uh, you know, those four or five trigger points, if you like, are signposts that I'm in unhealthy ego and I need to, I need to dial down. Um, I wanted to share that tip with you. There's a lot going on, so I'm going to get back. Leave me, uh, send me a message or leave me a note or a comment underneath and let me know what you'd like to hear about next.